So I'm Steve Chen from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and uh, I'm the head of the AI group there. So there's a lot of AI going on at NASA because a, a NASA is a very big enterprise uh, that has a lot of different areas of expertise and a lot of problems they're solving. So NASA has a classic big data problem. Uh, all of these scientific instruments that we send off into space, as well as ones that you know, measure things on the Earth, generate vast amounts of data. Uh, and one of the challenges is to correctly interpret that data, build models with that data, and that's fundamentally a data science problem. So machine learning has a lot to say about that and is being used in many, many ways to help uh, make that process of understanding the, the extremely large amounts of data uh, more quickly and more rapidly. Uh, we, don't, we don't just have science data, we also have engineering data. So trying to understand how the rockets work, how the spacecraft are working, those are also big data problems. And one of the fascinating uh, things about NASA is that when we can push these things onto the spacecraft and rovers, they have even greater potential um, because we can't even bring down the data to analyze it at home. So if we can analyze it on board, that's a, a big win. Uh, AI in my area, which is automated planning and scheduling and, and in terms of uh, autonomous vehicles is also very, very important to NASA. And uh, JPL is the lead robotic uh, space exploration center. And so we send probes out to Mars. Uh, we'll be sending one to Jupiter. Uh, we sent one to Saturn. And when you send an object that far out, uh, it's very hard to communicate with it. So the more we can make that spacecraft autonomous, the more we can make it so we're interacting with the spacecraft at a high level, which requires intelligence, which requires AI on the spacecraft, the better we can run the mission. Uh, having a self-sustaining colony on Mars is a completely different ballgame, though. Uh, and I think that that is a, a much, much more challenging thing. But I do believe that it is the destiny of humanity to explore uh, further and further, explore the outer reaches of the solar system, certainly robotically and eventually with a human sustained presence. It's a question of when, not if. I think there are so many places in our solar system and even on our Earth that we cannot send vehicles because we can't communicate with them. And I think everywhere from the deepest depths of the oceans to distant planets, uh, to landing on Europa, to exploring the subsurface ocean of Europa or Enceladus or even Pluto. Uh, I think these are all things that I would love to see. And even going beyond that, uh, sending vehicles to go explore the recently discovered Planet Nine, uh, you know, which is in the outer reaches of the solar system or even to go to another star. To me, those are all the voyages of discovery that AI has to play a key role in to be involved in aerospace engineering or in space science. Uh, there's a myriad of disciplines that, are, uh, that, are, uh, that that area represents. Uh, I think on the AI side as well, there's a, a large number of disciplines that include AI, computer science, operations research, uh, machine learning, data science, all these areas have a key role to play in the enterprise of space and the enterprise of AI and the intersection between those two. So I would say there's a broad portfolio of machine learning techniques uh, being actively pursued at NASA. Uh, not just uh, deep learning, uh, some of the applications that I'm very familiar with use random decision force machine learning. Uh, some other applications, some of the applications we've used on Earth Observing One include optimal Bayesian classifiers. So I'd say those are all tools in our tool suite that we use. Uh, and in my area, which is more uh, autonomous systems, more um, uh, command and control, uh, scheduling auto uh, and autonomous vehicles, we use a wide range of techniques. We use artificial intelligence techniques. We use operations research techniques. We use optimization techniques. We use optimal control techniques. To me, these are all different tools that we have in our toolbox. And the problems are hard enough that uh, we would be remiss uh, uh, in, in ruling any of them out. To me, I am very, very motivated by seeing AI actually used. I'm less on the theoretical side. And so for me, it's been really fascinating to come here uh, and 
uh, meet all these practitioners, all these people solving specific problems in a much more grounded fashion than I'm used to uh, working at NASA.